All right, we're going to start with number three. Um, part A, that's 7 pi over 4. So it says determine the, um, the quadrant in which each angle lies. So this is first. Uh, for all of these, it's really helpful just to draw a circle or at least envision a circle. Um, we know we're going to start here and uh, measure from there. So 7 pi over 4, let's see. Um, well, if we remember this is pi, to go halfway around is pi, this would be pi over 2, this would be pi over 4. So this is, if you will, 1 pi over 4. Uh, this would be 2 pi over 4, right? 2 pi over 4 would simplify to pi over 2. 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 4s would cancel and we'd have pi. So that's how we'll count it, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, here's 5, here's 6, here's 7. 7 pi over 4. So what quadrant is that? That's the quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. Quadrant 4. Quadrant 4. Part B. Um, mm -hmm. 11 pi over 4. Okay, so we know we've counted around. We've gotten to 7 pi over 4. Then we just keep going. 8, 9, 10, 11 pi over 4. Just keep going around and around and around forever. Uh, this would be, what, uh, 8 pi over 4, 9, 10, 11 pi over 4. So that would be quadrant 2. Okay. Um, now for number 6, uh, really similar, except for they don't have pi's in there, but it's still... Uh, a number of radians, three and a half radians, 3.5 radians. Not 3.5 pi radians, but 3.5. Um, so the number 3.5, well first let's think, how big is pi? If this is pi, how big is pi? Pi is approximately 3.14. And we are at 3.5. Um, let's see, if we went around to 270 degrees, um, that would be 3.14 and, I think I said 270 degrees, 270 degrees. Uh, well, how much would that be? Uh, 270, we're going to convert that to radians. Let's do that, so we'll, we'll multiply that by... Uh, pi over 180. Okay, so uh, what kind of a decimal would that be? You could pull out the calculator and say 270 times pi over 180. That's 4.7. So this is this is 4.17. So this is 3.14, this is 4.17, so somewhere between that is 3.5. Uh, another way to look at it. If pi is about 3.14, that's pretty close to 3. It's not a terrible approximation to go to 3. Um, you know, don't run at any math conferences and, and shout that pi is 3, but we could think of it that way for just a second. Um, and if we, so if we take this to be about 3 and we divide it into 3 pieces, then... Uh, right at around 60 degrees, somewhere close to 60 degrees, we find um, we find one radian, right? One third of the way to pi, pi being almost three. Uh, but what it would be what a little bit, 60 degrees would be a little bit more than one radian, right? Because it's 360s to 180. Uh, so one radian is just a little bit less than 60. So if we, if we went three radians, obviously we would be a little bit less than 3.14 radians, or pi radians. Um, if we went all the way around to six radians, we would be a little bit further away from full circle. So one, two, three, uh, four, five, six radians. So. Uh, one, two, three, and there's four, and so somewhere between uh, 3.14 and four is 3.5. So again, uh, two different ways of looking at it. It's in qu quadrant uh, three. Okay, so part B, 
uh, 2.25. All right, so we know this is 1, and then 2 would definitely be, you know, be close to 120, a little short, but uh, not as, as small as 90. And uh, 3 is definitely right here somewhere. So somewhere between 2 and 3, we're in quadrant 2. It's just an approximation. Okay. Let's see. Now we'll look at number 8. Um, part A. Negative 7 pi over 4. Um, we're supposed to sketch that in standard position. Kind of the same thing as what we did over here. Um, it's negative, first off, so we want to go clockwise. So we know this would be a measure of pi over 4, just in the negative direction, negative pi over 4. Uh, negative 2 pi over 4, negative 3 pi over 4, negative 4 pi over 4. So we're at 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, oh, these are pi, I was counting in pi over, pi over 2s. Hold on. Okay, so this is negative pi over 4, negative 2 pi over 4, negative 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4. So that would be a sketch in standard position, just like that, just with that uh, arrow curving around and showing us where we would land. Okay, part B uh, is negative 5 pi over 2. So here we go. So now we count in pi over 2s. Negative pi over 2, negative 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 2. Negative 5 pi over 2. Just that arrow circling around like that, that would be a sketch in standard position. Uh, starting on the right here and going negative, going the negative direction, um, that's it. Um, now let's jump down to number 13. Okay, so we, now we have this, uh, this vocab word of co-terminal. So we want an angle that's coterminal with negative 9 pi over 4. So first we should, uh, we should probably look at where negative 9 pi over 4 would be. Uh, so here is negative pi over 4, negative 2 pi over 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Negative 9 pi over 4 is right there. Um, well, if we want to find a coterminal angle, first we'll talk about what coterminal means. Uh, here's the initial side of our angle. And we measure around until we stop, and we call that the terminal side. Okay. Well, for an angle to be equal to this angle, it would have to be exactly the same. It would have to be exactly going around full circle in the negative direction, and then one more pi over 4 radian. Um, that would be equal. But we could say, uh, we could start here, and we could just go down, straight down, shortest distance, uh, in the negative direction, down to that terminal side, right? Now that angle's not equal to ni negative 9 pi over 4, but it does have the same initial and terminal side. Um, so it has the same, that would be co, same ending, ending being the terminal side, so it's co-terminal, same ending. Uh, so a co-terminal is one that starts and ends in the same place. It just maybe not, maybe it goes further, maybe it doesn't go as far uh, to get there. Uh, so we could call that negative pi over 4. Uh, we can see that that would be the case. Uh, we could also just go the uh, positive direction so you go from here around to there, right? That would be coterminal too, uh, and we could count that off. It'd be pi over four, two pi over four, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pi over four, and this is what it asks for: a positive and a negative angle that are coterminal with negative nine pi over four. Um, 
Now, what we should notice is that for any angle, we could start here at the terminal side. And say we wanted to find an angle that was coterminal. Well, it just needs to be in the same spot. So I could like go back and kind of take away uh, um, a part of the angle to go all the way back around to where we started. Right and now I'm on the same coterminal side, but I went back. How much did I go back? You might say I, I went back 360 degrees, a full revolution. Okay, but we we don't go back degrees, right? If we're in radians, we go back. Uh, number of radians. How many radians is that? Well, I went all the way around a full circle, and that's 2 pi. Okay, so I could say go uh, back, or if I'm going this direction, I'm going positive, right? So I'm going positive 2 pi. So I could take my negative 9 pi over 4, but add 2 pi. Uh, well, I need common denominators, so I'll take this is negative 9 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4. That's the same as 2 pi. And I'll get a positive, or no, sorry, uh, uh, still a negative, a negative um, pi over 4. All right. Well, there you go. There's a, a negative angle that's coterminal with uh, with... Um, negative 9 pi over 4. Uh, so that gives us this guy here. We could also just keep going. Since what we want is a positive, we've, we've got to keep adding on two pi's to get back into the positive. So we could then take negative pi over 4, which is coterminal with negative 9 pi, nine pi over 4, add uh, another 8 pi over 4. Right, That's another 2 pi that we're adding on. And that would be 7 pi over 4. Um, and that'll work for part B as well. So we'll look at part B. Uh, negative 2 pi over 15. And uh, this time we won't draw a circle. We'll just realize that wherever this negative 2 pi over 15 is, if I were to just go full revolutions, whether I go in the positive direction, if I just go a full revolution, a full circle, start here, and end there, then I'm back where I started. I'm on the same terminal side, only now it's an actually a, a different angle measure. So uh, why don't we add, since we know that we're going to want a, a positive, let's add 2 pi. Right? If we take negative 2 pi over 15 and add 2 pi, uh, well, we need common denominators again, so negative 2 pi over 15 plus, uh, well this would have to be 30 pi over 15 to be equal to a 2 pi. So 30 pi over 15 minus 2 pi over 15 would be 28 pi over 15. Uh, that's good, that's positive, that's, that's what they wanted. They wanted a positive angle that's coterminal with negative 2 pi over 15. So we'll, to get a, a negative 1, a negative angle, we'll subtract 2 pi. We'll go in the negative direction all the way around uh, and find another angle. Of course, we need the common denominators, 2 pi over 15 uh, minus 30 pi over 15, and that'll be negative 32 pi over 15. So there we go, one positive, one negative angle that is coterminal with, ne uh, with negative 2 pi over 15. All right. Um, now on to number 15. Um, so what they're asking us to do is find a couple things, one called the supplement, one called the complement. Um, two positive angles are supplement, or sorry, complementary if they add up to this much of an angle. You would call it 90. In radians, though, we need to get used to calling it pi over 2. Um, so they add up to pi over 2, they're called complementary. 
if they add up to, think about it yourself, how far is it from here to there, right? So like this angle and this angle add up to halfway around a circle, which is how many radians? Pi radians. So this would be complementary, complementary, and this would be supplementary. Yeah, abbreviate that. Complementary and supplementary. So what angle would add up with pi over 3 add up to pi over 2? Um, well, say this much is pi over 3, which is it's not very accurate drawing, but say this is pi over 3, then whatever adds up to pi over 2 is the, is the complement, or the, yeah, the complement. So if I take pi over 2 and I subtract pi over 3, then I'll have this, what's left over, so I'll take pi over 2 minus pi over 3. We need common denominators, so we'll multiply this by 3 over 3, we get 3 pi over 6. And we will subtract 2 pi over 6. And we'll get pi over 6. So pi over 3 and pi over 6 are supplementary, uh, or complementary, excuse me. For supplementary, we'll go all the way to pi. We'll subtract pi over 3. OK, but we need common denominators, so we have 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. And that would be 2 pi over 3. There you go. The, uh, the complement and the supplement. Um, I wanted to do 16 as well, because we're going to see something slightly interesting. Um, 3 pi over 4. OK. Well, if we think, well, it's got to add up to pi over 2, right? 3 pi over 4 plus something has to be pi over 2. So um, we'll take pi over 2, and we'll subtract 3 pi over 4. We have to have common denominators, so we have, um, uh, let's see, we need this to have a pi over, a pi over 2, or a, a denominator of 4, so we have 2 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4, and what do we wind up with? A negative pi over 4. Okay, you might think, well, okay, so negative pi over 4 is the supplement, or the complement, um, but what I said at the beginning, uh, you may remember, may not, is that it is two positive angles. This isn't a positive angle. So it doesn't have a complement. Uh, let's see, that has a supplement. Does it add up? Does this add up to, with, with another positive angle, add up to pi? Uh, so we'll take pi minus 3 pi over 4. Of course, we have to have common denominators, 4 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4 pi over 4. That's positive, so yes. Pi over 4 is the supplement of pi, or the supplement of 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is pi, and so they're supplemental angles. Okay. Um, so now we do a lot of the same stuff as we just done for radians. We do that same thing for degrees. Um, number 24. We're going to determine the quadrant that they're in. So part A is 87.9. OK, so we look at our circle. We say, OK, this far is 0 degrees. If we measure this far, we're at 90 degrees. Well, that's past 87.9. 87.9 is really close to 90 degrees, just not quite there. So we're in quadrant 1. OK. Um, Let's see, next would be part B, that's 8.5 degrees. Well, 8.5 degrees, we barely have measured anything when we're at 8.5 degrees. We measured from here to there. We didn't go very far at all. So we're still in quadrant one. Um, right, good. So next. Um, Let's look at 31. All right, skipping over the standard position stuff, I think you'll be fine there, since you're really familiar with degrees, I'm sure. So they give us this angle from here to there. They say it's 52 degrees. We're supposed to find a uh, another angle that's, or two other angles, one positive, one negative, 
that are co-terminal, right? So this is the terminal side. If we were to go all the way around the circle and stop on that side again, we would be co-terminal. We would be on the same terminal side, and we'd have a co-terminal angle. So what was that? Uh, we added, uh, you know, like 90 degrees and 180 and 270, and we went a full 360 from 52. We started there and went a full 360 around uh, to get back to where we started. So we took 52. We added 360, and so we will have um, 412 degrees. Okay. Go the other direction. Don't go in the positive direction. Go in the negative direction. Start at 52. So if we go down this direction, okay, we're going down, 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 getting smaller. We're at zero degrees now, right? And then we just keep going and going and going all the way around, 360 degrees in the negative direction. So we took 52 degrees. We started going back in the negative direction. We went a full 360. And so there we go. Um, and that is negative 396 degrees. Uh, sorry, negative uh, 308 degrees. Negative 308 degrees. Um, all right, so that's co-terminal for, um, for 30. One, uh, 31 has uh, part B, so part B would be, uh, what angle do we have there? Negative 36, right. shows you an angle from there to there. They say it's negative 36 degrees. If we go full circle, keep going in the negative direction. Uh, sorry, we should have kept going all the way down to the same, co to the same terminal side. Negative 36 minus 360 would be negative 396 degrees. Uh, if we wanted to find a positive angle, then we will start here and go in the positive direction, 360 degrees. Negative 36 plus 360 degrees. Uh, that would equal 324 degrees. So you can see that if, if we keep adding on 360 degrees forever and ever and ever, multiple and multiple times, we'll keep finding angles that are coterminal. They have the same terminal side as negative 36, um, but they'll just be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But these are just two, the negative and the positive, um, and there we go. Um, next 35. give us the measure of 24 degrees, and they want us to find the supplement and the complement. So um, now, a, two complementary angles, uh, 24 and something else will add up to 90 degrees. That would be the complementary angle. So we'll take 90 and subtract 24, and we'll have 66 degrees. That would be the complement. Um, let's see, I just did that in my head. I want to make sure that I didn't make a mistake here. That's 66 degrees. Uh, then we want 24 to add to some other angle to measure to 180 degrees. So we'll take 180 minus 24. And get 156 degrees. That would be the supplement. So 24 and 156 are supplementary angles. <coughs> Um, and then we'll look at 36 real quick. See something kind of interesting, 129 degrees. If we say it's going to add up to 90, and we take 90 minus 129 degrees, then we're going to get negative 39 degrees. And remember I said that complementary and supplementary angles have to be positive angles. This is not positive. It's not the complement. But if we look for the supplement, um, 180 minus 129, we get 51 degrees. So it does have a supplement. Uh, so good, that's the supplement. Uh, and that is the idea of complementary and supplementary angles. Um, we'll go on to 47.
convert from degrees to radians. So 115 degrees. Remember, again, we're just going to, anytime we want to convert anything to anything else, all we need is some way to uh, make equivalent uh, the, the kind of unit that we're using uh, to the other unit that we're using. Right? We want to equate some number of degrees to some number of radians. We'll cancel out the degrees and we'll be left with radians. Well, the simplest one is 180 to pi, 180 degrees to pi radians. So the degrees are going to cancel out. We'll multiply by pi and we'll divide by 180. So we just take 115, multiply by pi, divide that by 180, and we get uh, 2.01, let's say, 2.01 uh, radians. So there we go. Um, 50, number 50, uh, is 46.52 uh, degrees. Um, and if we want to convert that to radians, then we're going to multiply this by pi over 180 again. That's because it cancels out the degree measures, and we're left with whatever we're left with. So negative 46.52 times uh, pi, divided that by 180, and we get negative 0.81. Negative 0.81. And you could write this like write radians like I've written up here, but more and more we'll get used to not writing that. Uh, we know it's radians by the fact that we're talking about an angle, and we haven't written degrees up here. So we know that it's in radians. That's kind of the default if it's not in radians. Um, kind of like when I tell you that it's, uh, I don't know, how cold it is outside? It's a little cold right now. But uh, if it's 35 degrees, you don't need me to tell you Fahrenheit. Uh, you probably don't even think about whether it's in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, but it's in it is in Fahrenheit. That's how we measure it here in America. Um, so it's just an assumed thing. When you're talking about if you're talking about angles and you, and you don't write degrees up here, then you assume it's in radians, just like you assume that the temperature I tell you is in Fahrenheit uh, rather than Celsius. Um, so then we're going to convert in number fifty three from radians to degrees. pi over 7 radians. Converted to degrees, well I want to cancel out those radians and convert it to degrees. Get those radians to cancel out. Now here's uh, a thing that, that confuses people and uh, I believe, yeah, no, um, sorry I'm talking to myself. Um, the thing that people confuse is to equate pi Right, the number pi to uh, the the uh, angle unit radian. Um, okay, so what I'm saying is they think, or, the, or in their minds, they they don't make a difference between the number pi being in in this fraction and uh, radians being the unit. They think of pi as the units. Pi is not the units. Pi is a number, right? So the number pi cancels out. But really, what what we're doing also is Right. assumed that there's this little radian thing here. We're canceling out the radian units. Okay, So there's not always going to be a pi when you're measuring in radians. That's not the unit measure. Okay, By that I mean when we have inches, we write 5 inches. And when we have feet, we write 12 feet. And when we have um, gallons, we write 7.5 gallons. But pi is not like that. It's not like you always have to say pi in order to have radians. You could say 3.5 radians, just like right here. 2.01 radians, negative 0.81 radians. There's no pi in there, but it's still radians. Okay. A lot of radians are going to have pi in them, but pi is not the, the unit itself. It's just a number. Uh, so anyway, forgetting all that, 
Um, now we have left 180 and 7. Everything else is canceled out. 180 divided by 7 is going to give us 25.71 degrees. And um, let's do one more, 56. Um, negative 4.2 pi radians. I'm going to write radians just so you see that that's... That's the unit's radians. We're going to multiply that by 180 because we want to be left with 180. We're going to divide that by pi radians because we want to cancel out the radian measures. Pi also cancels out, right? The number pi cancels out. And so we multiply 180 by negative 4.2. Negative 7.56. Now let's go on to 71. So there's this circle, and they're drawing a sector of the circle, and they're saying, well, they're putting 6 centimeters here, and they're putting 5 centimeters here. What does that mean? Well, the 6 here means the arc length, right? And this is the radius. And remember in the previous video we said that uh, the arc length s, which is a weird letter to use, but the arc length s is equal to pi times r, where pi, or not pi, excuse me, theta times r, where theta is uh, an angle measure, and we're measuring it in radians. Um, but they're saying to find the angle in radians. Uh, so this formula is kind of reliant on this being in radians. Uh, so if we want to solve for this radians here, we just divide both sides by r. So s over r would give us the angle, and that angle would be in radians. If we wanted it in degrees, we'd have to do some conversion. But uh, for now, when we divide s by r, we find theta. So if we take the arc length 6 and divide it by 5, that's it. That is the radian measure of this angle. Uh, and you're done. That's it. So... If you have the angle, or the, the arc length, and you have the radius, and you want the angle, take the, the arc length divided by the radius. That is the measure of the radians. So, there it is. Um, and one more, 82. They give us that the radius of some sector is 9 feet. And they give us that the, uh, the angle is 60 degrees. Uh, and they want us to find, uh, so I guess this would be theta, they want us to find uh, the arc length. Um, and I imagine you're all going, oh, you say, oh, I know the arc length is theta times r, so I'll just take 60 and multiply it by uh, 9, and I'll get 540. Yay, I found the arc length, but you should know by the tone of my voice that you're doing it wrong, right? Uh, you've known me long enough for that. This theta, remember, needs to be in radians, and this is not in radians. This is in degrees. So to find the arc length, first we'll have to take 60 degrees, but to convert it to radians, so multiply it by pi over 180. And multiply that now by the radius. Right? This is degrees converted to radians, and so this is in radians just like it should be. Okay, So um, 60 divided by 180 is, uh, is, is 1 third. And then 1 third times 9 is 3, so 3 pi, 3 pi what? Feet. 3 pi feet. Okay, so remember, radians, got to be in radians. And if you're not in radians, got to get in radians. All right. If you're in radians, great, no problem. You just multiply the radians by the radius, and you have the arc length. Otherwise, you need to do conversion. All right, so... Uh, Thanks for watching that. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you need any help with anything else.